Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. At Deuteronomy 28 verse 25, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will come at them from one direction but flee from them in seven and you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms on earth. Wow. Well, didn't even know this scripture existed, this particular verse, but I can tell you it describes my life during the days of my generational curses. You know, it's it's exciting hearing about the blessings of God. We all want to claim the blessings that God has for us. And yes, we all have a portion of blessings in the spirit realm that are assigned specifically to you with your name on them, right? It is true, you do. But the truth of the matter is, um, you know there are all the the, there is such a thing as curses curses are real they're very real and they come through various uh, means or for various reasons for example your very ancestors can do things that um incur curses for generations and generations or you yourself can you know engage in activities such as occult that can then incur you or start generations in your life going forward into your children and their children and their children or someone in your bloodline can be you know involved in stuff that incurs curse um stuff that incurs curses um and that will affect everybody else in 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 the bloodlines um and the future um generations in those bloodlines that's how it works right um and so we're looking at some of the symptoms or some of the little ways that you can identify that no this this is happening in my life and it's been carrying on for too long and maybe perhaps there is a chance that i am cursed right it's not something that people are readily happy to embrace or to accept that this is the condition they are in except for those who are determined to seek healing to seek restoration from god uh, then they start the journey and they are and they are willing to repent and they are willing to admit their guilt and they are willing to do everything that God will ask them to do to get the healing. I had to do that. I had to go through those steps to achieve this healing that is manifesting in my life and in my family now. So I'm going to go through the list. And the first one is just even this very verse is talking about it itself. You'll be defeated before your enemies. And I literally mean in everything, guys, even where there's no need to be defeated, you are defeated. I saw the scripture manifest in my life too many times. Defeat was the order of my life, right? For, for years, um, it was just, it was insane. It was just insane how literally everything, especially defeat and rejection, it is almost, I started to anticipate that if I attempted to do something, it, it would, you know, it was almost inevitable that it wouldn't fail. Sorry, it would fail. Okay, except the only thing that I feel kept me going, apart from the grace of God, because by some miracle, I wasn't even dismissed from my, like I didn't lose my career entirely. I kept working, even though I was at the bottom of the of the, of the pile, um, at the bottom of the, you know, of the list of, like, there was no chance of promotion whatsoever. Um, I, I, I maintained my career and I was, I maintained, a, you know, a consistent place, consistent place of work. So I didn't hop along from one place to the other. I was able to, as hard as things were and as much as I feel like I suffered, um, rejection and just failure in, in, on every side, right? Somehow uh, God gave me the grace to just, you know, persevere and just stay in one place and try to figure out and, and continue to work hard and continue to hope that things would get better. Um, and so just the, just defeating everything, um, things look promising at first, you lose momentum uh, once you start. So suppose you have a project to do, you're very excited about it, you can see all the possibilities of that project. The minute you start that project, you start to lose that momentum, that energy, that drive to get things done. Uh, you, you can't seem to really figure out, there's no clarity in your mind, your mind is just in a haze you know over permanently almost right yeah you, 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 you can't think clearly um you know what you're meant to do but for some reason you can't really there's just confusion in your life and in your mind all the time right that's one of the classic signs of uh of cases in your life and in your family and you'll notice that it's not just you you'll notice that even members of your, of your family your, your 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 siblings your parents your cousins there's just this nothing's there's nothing really working out right um in 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 the bloodlines of of your family the things are just 
everything is just there's just no order it's just confusion there's so much dysfunction and it's not just with you it's everywhere you turn in your family everybody's experiencing some kind of you know the kind of dysfunction that's very openly blatantly clear for other people to see there are sort of dysfunctions in life that people enjoy but they can they can be kept secret when you are cursed it becomes apparent to everyone that your life just isn't running the way it should um you may not necessarily realize it it doesn't hit you in the face at first but over time you start to realize that oh my gosh this year when you hear people say oh this year wasn't my year when you you know the first year you see that things didn't go well don't accept that as oh it was just a bad year if you're not careful before you know it it'll be a bad five years and a bad 10 years and a bad 15 years you don't want to waste so the, the whole point of sharing uh, these symptoms with you tonight uh, today is just to you know just so you can wake up and realize because there there are things you can do you that you can do something about cases in your life right god has given a way out but if you don't even recognize that there are cases in your life you won't even realize there's something to be done about it we carried on my family carried on for over a decade thinking we were just having bad luck never ever occurred that it was generational cases it didn't even we didn't even know the word generational cases never mind suspect that we had generational cases right we didn't even know the principles of cases and blessings deuteronomy 28 that's your guide just read all of it it'll show you how to get blessings it'll show you how to get cases it's that simple right rejection oh my gosh rejection becomes your middle name when you have cases right you you're just rejected everywhere you go um you 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 even when you say you you join a, a a project or you join a team of people or you get involved in stuff, the minute you step in, it's either the project shuts down or so, somehow they just leave you out. You're just it's just rejection. That's a classic sign of rejection. Self sabotage. Uh, really bad decisions. Like you have no clarity in your mind. You make decisions that are really poor. You actually don't care what the consequences what might be. When you are cursed, you are just used to being confused uh, and and things not working out in your life that you get to a point where you actually don't care really um you know it, it, i remember really going through a time where i mean i'm a single mom now and um if i could change it i would right but it is what it is and i am where i am now by god's grace you know god's taking care of me and my child so you know but i can tell you that there was a time when i thought being a single mom would be the best thing ever because i i was going through cycles of failed relationships failed marriages failed everything and so i started to have a really big distrust for men and i can tell you now uh, that you know my mindset's definitely not that way i'm not in a rush to get with anyone and get married and whatever you while i'm not you know like that anymore um, but I'm also not negatively thinking of relationships and thinking, oh, all men are like this. Because once you start generalizing like that, as a good teacher who explains this really well, and, and she always emphasizes that um, uh, w when you hear people who make uh, general statements or generalized um, statements about, about everybody, like, oh, all women are like this or all men are like this, that's a classic sign of someone uh, who is traumatized, someone who is going through, you know, cases, basically. Um, y yeah, so you, you, you just... You just sabotage everything in your life. You you because of that thing again. It goes back to um, you know just that defeat in your life. You you start something new and exciting. Uh, before long, you lose you lose interest. You lose all hope. You, you lose all excitement for it. You lose all momentum, and you're not as excited for it as you were before. Um, humiliation at every opportunity. Oh my gosh! I mean, if I if I carry on with this one, it'll make this share very long. But literally, particularly, I noticed with family gatherings gatherings like big family gatherings african family gatherings tend to be huge um and somehow I'd, I'd, I'd be humiliated one way or the other i mean you know it was just it, and it, it happened from a marked time in my life going forward um just just humiliated just you know everything I, i'm trying to give an example every embarrassing situation you could think of i remember um 
uh, anyway, I don't want the minute I start to give examples is going to start involving. I'm going to have to speak about members of my family and whatever you and I, I don't want to go there as yet mostly out of out of respect for them um so I'll, I'll just leave it at that and just say you're just humiliated at every opportunity even in the workplace any humiliating situ- scenario you could think of if anyone was going to make a mistake that was just embarrassing i would always be the i was the picture girl for that kind of thing right um so it becomes just an, a normal part of your life and frustration the whole goal that's the whole goal of cases because these cases are being um, enforced and policed by um, demons right and the whole goal is to cause you to be frustrated and the more you get frustrated you the more you give up on life the more you make you make even worse decisions than you did before and so this this these cycles carry on but each each cycle is is worse than the last cycle you know things are carrying on you have the same patterns repeating but things are getting worse and worse if you're humiliated to at one level last year the level of humiliation the following year will be even worse right um then there was also uh just rejection uh, re- repeated cycles of defeat and you can you could all, almost mark um every at different times of the year what what was what was going to happen financially what was going to happen your christmas has become the same it's always the same story you're always ill prepared for family gatherings you're always ill prepared you know there's certain occasions coming and you should be saving up money um for those occasions but somehow you never do it so you always find yourself repeating the same embarrassing ill prepared um uh, just it's just a mess it's just repeated cycles of defeat just everything you do just never works out that that that's typical of general of, of cases basically and just no excitement for life guys just you literally and i i at the time i didn't realize i had no excitement for life i do feel an excitement for life now just like i felt as a child particularly as a teenager my teenage years were the happiest time of my life because i i was just i was just one of those really carefree teenagers i wasn't your typical cool teenager and i just enjoyed i had a really good sense of humor i just enjoyed i had a good laugh um with everyone as well i didn't really have any specific friends that i got on with i had a good laugh with everyone i just remember being happy during my teenage years and of course the generational cases hadn't really kicked in and started to manifest in my life then um but uh, that joy for life um I lost it for over two almost yeah two decades let me say and and now after uh, as I've testified after my prayer and fasting where I broke generational curses um as you know that that excitement for life I feel it again and and that leads me to the next point resentment for happy people in that time where I had no excitement for life I genuinely saw people being joyful about life and being excited and literally felt disgusted because I thought what on earth what have you got to be happy about right and sometimes you will see people being grumpy and and, and you know there are people who are almost not happy to see you succeed it's not that they're not happy for you and I'm speaking from experience it's more the fact that they just genuinely have no joy for life they're not capable of being happy for anyone we take it personal when we think oh well you know she's supposed to be my cousin she's supposed to be my sister but she didn't even celebrate when this happened to me um that it's not it's nothing personal literally those people are just enduring such harsh circumstances in life They'll, there's not just no joy they're not capable of feeling any joy right uh, i wasn't i went through that you know i it, i realize it now that oh my gosh the excitement and just the joy, the laughter I feel in my heart, that had all gone away. Um, self-doubt. Oh, yeah. You just doubt everything. You you want to be involved in things. And yeah, you put yourself forward to be involved in projects. But you deep down, you generally feel like, it's uh, well, everything I'm involved in never works out. But I'm going to try anyway. Um, and, and just retrogression, going backwards. But you somehow you just keep going forward somehow god keeps you going for me the miracle in all this is that even in my times of being cursed when god was clearly unhappy about something in my family and in my bloodlines from my ancestors and whatever you somehow he he still kept us he kept us alive somehow he kept us going somehow he kept us hopeful hope is such a, a is such a miraculous um 
I'm not going to call it an emotion. It's an emo- it, it's it's a mindset, isn't it? Being hopeful is a mindset. And of course, when you read the Bible and you read the word of God, you have so much to be hopeful for. So you hold on to the scriptures. Um, but, the, you know, somehow just I, I, I suppose it's the stubborn nature, the, the stubborn uh, inherent nature of my, you know, personality. I just refuse to give up. I, I just told myself, no, I'm going to keep trying. But I was cursed and no matter how much, how hard I tried, things just never worked out. But when you search for God and follow his word, you start to see healing. You start to see an improvement in your life. You know, it really is true. God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. And the way that God adds these blessings to you, is not, it's not dramatic. They're not all at once. But you, you first the, the first sign that you're healing and your family are going through a healing process and a restoration process is the peacefulness of it all. You know, there's no progress in, in turmoil and chaos and confusion you just don't make progress just like in times of war things get broken down things get destroyed um infrastructure look at look at what's happening in russia and ukraine of course there's war in other places as well but you know war and chaos and com- and and just conflict there's no production going on there's no there's no f- forwardness there's no you don't make progress in those times things break down Um, But when God starts to heal you, you go through peaceful times. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.